back, I'm gonna show you how much a software engineer makes. I've worked as a software engineer for about five years now, so I'm gonna take you through the different salaries I've received throughout my career. So starting off with number one, computer science TA. This did not make a lot of money. I was still in college, teaching assistant, didn't really teach anyone, walked around the labs and helped people. This made about 10 bucks an hour, I think. Maybe 11. It was like 200 bucks a month. Not a lot of hours, not a lot of made per hour. But it was a job, you know, and a pretty easy job at that. I had office hours, I would sit, no one would come to my office hours. It was chill. My next job was working as a Yik Yak representative. And I don't know if you remember Yik Yak, but it was very popular back in 2016. It was popular on the college campuses. I think it got banned from high school campuses. <laughs> but I was a Yik Yak representative, and this required obtaining Yik Yak merch and giving it out to people. Again, pretty straightforward. All I had to do was take photos of me giving out the merch, and the people People that got the merch had to follow Yik Yak, download the app. For the Yik Yak gig, I made about 600 bucks and then got a $300 bonus at the end of the semester because apparently I made some great photos. <laughs> that only lasted for one semester because Yik Yak eventually went bankrupt and there's no more Yak. Then after that, this is like junior, senior year of college, I worked as a Code Academy advisor. This is someone that, I don't know if they still do this, but you subscribe to Code Academy and then you get access between like 8 a.m. and midnight. You could ask your questions to these Code Academy advisors. It was like a live chat. I would come on for my two hour session and I would answer people's questions. And usually there would be about 10 or 12 of us like on the session and you just needed to grab enough questions for a given an hour. That paid about $15 an hour, so that was not too bad. But again, not a lot of shifts, so it was only about $200 to $250 a month. As I was doing that, I was also applying for scholarships in college, and so those would come in like $1,000 amounts, $2,000 amounts, one was like $5,000. These were things that were put towards college expenses, and so while they were income, it went towards the school. I grouped that in here because there are a ton of tech scholarships out there. Just Google around, apply to all of them, and I think you'll be surprised at how much you actually get. Still in college, I also did a ton of hackathons. And Hackathons are a very valid way of making money. A hackathon is a 24 hour to 36 hour coding event, usually in person, but with COVID, now a lot of them are virtual and go over the period of a couple weeks or even a month. But these hackathons are essentially giving out free money. All you have to do is win them. Tech Crunch used to do one in May before the TechCrunch conference. If you've ever watched Silicon Valley, it's the same thing, but there's a hackathon version of it. Made a couple thousand dollars off of that. Specific companies will also have hackathons where you can win prize money at, and sometimes it'll come in the form of gift cards, which is great. At the time, I was also doing like other side gigs, and so 30 Days of Code was happening, LinkedIn Learning courses were happening, and this is towards the end of junior year, beginning of senior year, and they're starting, but they're not making money yet. All right, made a good chunk of change, but now it's time for our first internship. It's in the New York, New Jersey area. I lived in New York City, but commuted out to New Jersey. I always wanted to live in Manhattan, so that was super important to me, but I made about $24 per hour. This was a technical internship. You had to have computer science experience. You had to know how to code or at least some product experience, but it was 40 hours a week and $24 an hour, so it made about $960. $60 per week and this is really good. This is like the most money that I made at that time and it was with a great company. Some of you may think that's low for a tech internship and there were other offers I had. One was like 40 an hour but I really wanted to work at this company and for me $24 an hour was good and I think it's important to point out that this was, it's a tech company but they're also a media company and so they're not going to pay a Google amount. This was also the total compensation so there were no bonuses, there was no location help there was no none of that it was 24 bucks an hour and that's the amount and I was happy with that so we did the tech internship that turned into a job and for the job we got $80,000 a year this was a rotational program and so you got to live in different places and try different roles and that to me was like really cool really exciting they also paid for you to move to these places and so while that wasn't formally part of the compensation it was something that I felt was a benefit I was also kind of thinking it was gonna be around 60,000 the offer and so when I got 80,000 that was like pretty cool so I 
took that offer, started working, entry level software engineer in this rotational program, worked in a few different roles. About six months after I started, ended up getting a $5,000 increment to the salary. So now it was at $85,000 a year. Some of you may think, ah, that's all you made. And some of you are probably thinking, that's a ton to make just coming out of college. And I was more on the latter side of that. I thought it was ridiculous, this amount, uh, compared to what I did with Yik Yak. Then this rotational program is two years, and so along the way you get merit increases, and so by the end of the program I was making about $90,000 a year. These merit increases, many companies do them, but they're usually based on your merit, and it's kind of to keep up with inflation. So usually it's anywhere between one and 5%. I've gotten 1% before, I've gotten 3 percent before, I've gotten five percent before, but you just don't know. Now when you work at a large company, sure you have the salary, but you usually get a couple of other things with your offer. You might get a signing bonus, you might get a location change bonus, you get a 401k match, you get lots of other things. And so the salary is one number, but there are other numbers that increase your total compensation. So in addition to the salary for the rotational thing, it also came with a bonus. This company also happens to do a six percent match of the 401k, so that ends up being another $5,000 that bests over time, but I've been there long enough that it's bested. It also came with theme park tickets, so that was that package. Then after the rotations, I graduated or launched from the program and got a software engineer two position with the company. So this was one step up from entry level and it came with the higher compensation. This started off at 108 and so that was the salary amount and then I did get a signing bonus. This was something that I did negotiate and it did not come with a location package to move. The signing bonus kind of covered that which is why I was able to negotiate it. In addition to the salary, the bonus, it also came with stock and this is something Something I did not get the first time around and maybe I should have negotiated the first time around. So a lot of times if you work at a larger company, they'll offer stock as a part of their package. They might call it RSU, which is like a restricted stock unit, and so it's stock that vests over time. So imagine it's Tesla. Oh my god, it's at 600? Tesla right now is at 602 a share. As a part of your compensation, you get Tesla stock. So say it's 10 units of the Tesla stock. If you multiply that by 600, that's $6,000 if you sold that stock today. However, you can't sell the stock because it vests over time, so you don't get all of it at once. You might get one share today, and then next year you might get two or three shares, and then after that you'll get three more shares. And you'll continue to get that until everything is vested, and usually it'll take about five years for everything to vest. Then, once it's all vested, you'll want to wait a year and then sell the stock, or hold for longer, so you can get taxed at the long-term gain taxation rather than the short-term gain taxation. If you hold for longer, you pay less taxes, but it's essentially a way for the company to pay you that's not in a salary format. So it's something that's taxed later rather than today. So you got your salary, your signing bonus, maybe your location bonus, your stock, and then you might also get stock options. Stock options are the option to buy a stock at a lower price. And so let's say we're working with Tesla and Tesla gives you a stock option of $300. And so they'll give you the option to buy the stock at $300, but right now it's listed for $600. So, you, so you'll make $300 on each share. That's pretty good. Of course, they don't give you the option to buy it right now at that price. You'll buy it at that price later on. It's something that also vests over time. So they're giving you the offer today, but they're gonna say in the offer, you can buy our stock at $300 in 2025. Say that's the number, or it might be 2024 or whenever. You can buy so many shares at $300 in 2024. Then when you get to 2024, maybe the stock's at like $1,000 per share. Your option's at 300, so you can exercise your option, buy the stock at a lower price, and then immediately sell it and make $600 per share. Of course, you'll wanna get the long-term gains tax, so that means you need to hold it for a year and then you'll pay less taxes on it. Of course, in that year, the stock could tank and now you've bought these shares at 300 and now it's at 200 and now you've lost money, but that's the market. Over time though, the stock should go up and I imagine Tesla will continue to go up. So what does all this mean? Essentially, you'll have your salary, but then you might have a five to $10,000 bonus as a part of your package.
package. And then you might have stock or stock options, and usually that package is anywhere between $20,000 or $50,000. Of course, you don't get that money now. It's something that's a reward if you continue to stay with the company. That's why it's easier to negotiate those sorts of things, like getting extra stock or getting extra stock options, rather than your base salary. The base salary often has a range, and so for a given position, the range may be large. Like, let's say for a given engineering position, it's between $100,000 and $140,000. That's a large range. But if you've already been given a salary that's like $134,000, it's going to be harder to bump that up to the complete top of that range rather than asking for another 10 or 20 or 300 stock units. Of course, that depends on how much the stock is worth, all that. So for me, I started at 108 through the merit increase cycle again it's an increment that is usually every year it might be every six months from one to five percent now i'm making about 114 for the base salary that's with about five years experience and time at the company in addition to that in addition to all the things i just said you'll also get compensated likely in annual or quarterly bonuses for a quarterly it could be anywhere from 500 to 2500 for your annual it could be 10,000 to 20,000 to 30,000, it depends on your position and again, your time at the company. It also depends on how well the company did that year. These are also part of your total compensation. So it's not just that salary number, it's all of these other things that are available for you to negotiate if you're wanting to become a software engineer. So my total compensation is probably around 150 or 160, even though the salary is only 114. This is because you have all of these bonuses, you have all of these stock things happening, you have all of these stock options happening. You have free theme park tickets and free services. And so free internet, free cable, free Amazon Prime, whatever your company does. There are other things that you don't have to pay for because they are a benefit from the company. There are plenty of people that don't like their job, do it for the money, and that's totally fine. You don't have to be a great software engineer to be a software engineer because we're so in demand. So some other things to consider are, is it fun? Do they send you to conferences? Do you get to go to cool places as a part of the job? Do they do hackathons? Do they have fun Christmas parties? What's the work-life balance? These are all important. And it's one of the reasons why I work at the company that I choose to work at. But when it comes to negotiation, always ask for the highest amount you can think of. This is what I've done and it's worked pretty well. All they can do is tell you no, especially if you're filling out one of those forms where it has the different bullets of what your expected salary is like is it this bracket is it this bracket choose the highest bracket they can always put you down a bracket but they're never gonna put you up a bracket on the form all right that's it for this video thank you so much for watching I hope this gave a little insight into how much a software engineer makes I'll see you next time happy coding